This is Radio Now 95.3 FM. Come for the news, stay for informed conversations. Nigeria has joined other African countries to demand a seat on the United Nations, a permanent seat on the United Nations Security Council. The Minister of Defense, Mohamed Badaru, defended this call by pointing to Nigeria's deployment of over 200,000 troops in 41 peacekeeping missions starting in 1960. The Defense Minister also stressed the importance of building professional African armies to combat terrorism and called for the operationalization of the African standby force. Joining us this morning is Professor David Awurawo, Professor of International Relations and Strategic Studies at the University of Lagos. Professor, good morning, and thank you for joining us on the conversation. Thank you for having me, and good morning to listeners. Right. So this call for African representation on the council has been on for a while. Um, what are the chances that Nigeria will be the country chosen? Yeah, the chances are bright. Um, ordinarily, there is not supposed to be a contest uh, as to whether Nigeria would uh, be among the countries or not. Uh, but in recent times, uh, Nigeria's uh, influence in global politics has waned tremendously. Uh, that is why there is not a debate as to whether uh, if one slot is uh, allotted to Africa, Nigeria will get even two slots. Egypt is a country in the north. Africa is a country south. Uh, Nigeria is a contender in the west. Like the minister said, yes, uh, no country comes near Nigeria in terms of uh, contributions of peacekeeping. Uh, and other activities of the United Nations, uh, of, of all these countries I've just mentioned, the front runners, Egypt, South Africa. But uh, Nigeria's influence in the world has uh, reduced uh, tremendously in recent times. And uh, uh, that is why there is a debate as to whether Nigeria will be one, if one is picked, whether Nigeria will be one, or if two are, uh, as I said, whether Nigeria will also be not those two. Uh, Professor, we have to look at Nigeria's security challenges as part of whether it would impede Nigeria's chances at that seat, whether one seat or two seats. Because the other countries you mentioned, Egypt in the north, South Africa in the south, they're not facing the kind of security challenges that we are facing. Do you see it as an impediment? Certainly. Um, the United Nations system, and even NATO itself as well, um, and even the EU, one of the things they consider is the stability and the um, extending security uh, issues in Nigeria, which have continued to, by the way, uh, extend, uh, no, persist, especially since 2010, uh, it, it will be a major factor uh, because uh, the, the security challenges uh, you know, mean that the country is not as stable as what we want, and uh, of course, those other countries interested in, uh, you know, being, you know, the, the permanent members, who also likely make some reference to it. And of course, the United Nations uh, system is not oblivious of uh, the, the the security challenges Nigeria faces. So it will certainly be a factor in whether Nigeria uh, becomes one of the permanent members of the U.S. Security Council or not. But looking at the makeup of the UN Security Council, you still have the, the permanent members of that council. You still have members there who are involved in conflict. Russia um, has been involved in, in conflict in Ukraine for a while. Is it possible that um, Nigeria, given its landmass, the numbers of people within it, as well as our history of being at the forefront of peacekeeping missions, both um, African peacekeeping missions and the United Nations peacekeeping missions, is it possible that our security challenges could be outweighed by our past achievements um, and by our strategic location in Africa? It is not that uh, the security challenges would uh, automatically disqualify Nigeria. Uh, they will only make it more difficult than it would otherwise have been uh, if we didn't have those security challenges. Uh, besides, globally, uh, there are countries, irrespective of whatever problems they have, that will normally feature in uh, any global uh, institution. Um, you know, uh, in, the, in the global system, we have uh, uh, medium powers, uh, 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 great powers, and superpowers. Um, those great powers and superpowers normally 
would uh, 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 feature prominently in any international institution uh, that they are qualified to be a member of, even if they have security challenges. Uh, Nigeria does not belong to that class. Um, so they, they, what those countries they have that will make them to qualify, whether they have security problems or not, Nigeria does not have that. What we would measure uh, uh, power, the indices of power. Uh, Nigeria only has a couple of them. Uh, these countries have almost all. And so these countries will still make it, whether they have security problems or not. But Nigeria, of course, because of other factors, security challenges make it now more difficult, you know, uh, to, to qualify if we are talking about permanent membership of the United Nations Security Council. But mm -hmm. it is not that the challenges will make Nigeria not qualify. No, it won't disqualify Nigeria. It will make it a bit more difficult than it would otherwise have been. Uh, I mean, qualification in many ways goes back to the point you noted in the beginning, which is Nigeria's waning relevance internationally. The current permanent members, as we understand it, uh, first off, of course, they were allies during World War II, but also there was the importance that they had globally. If Nigeria is not the front runner, if there's a different African country that's the front runner or two other African countries, do you expect Nigeria to throw its weight behind that country just for the sake of African representation on the council? No, not at all. Not at all. Um, if I to be a shame, um, it would be a shame to Africa um, and even the world if Nigeria, uh, you know, if this country council is expanded and its lot is given to Africa, Nigeria does not get it. Nigeria will fight. Um, will fight and fight to ensure that he gets it. If Nigeria does not get it, well, um, for the sake of, uh, you know, Africa solidarity, of course, Nigeria will support that country. But until that announcement is made, Nigeria will never throw its way behind any country. Uh, because when we look at, we also, of course, we are talking about peacekeeping. We also look at, you know, the history, how Nigeria has uh, gone on over the years. When Nigeria got independence, it regarded its, its, its independence as incomplete until every African country became independent. And it was not just uh, rhetoric. It pursued it to logical conclusions. Zimbabwe, Angola, just name it, and of course, South Africa. Uh, of course, peacekeeping, we have also talked about that. So, despite the security challenges, Nigeria should just be easily the uh, country selected. Uh, you know, but of course, we know how international politics uh, plays out. So, until the announcement is made, Nigeria will never ever throw behind any African country. But of course, if the announcement is made for the sake of African solidarity, Nigeria will likely support whoever emerges. Professor, thank you very much for your time and your expertise on this conversation. Professor David Awura was a professor of international relations and strategic studies at the University of Lagos, and he joined us this morning to speak on the call by Nigeria and other African nations for a reorganization of the UN Security Council and a seat on the table. You're still on to Radio Now 95.3 FM Lagos. In just a few moments, we'll be turning to the markets to take a look at the prices of goods and services on Naira and Kobo. Do stay with us. We are intentional. Intentional about the stories we tell and the language we use in telling them. Intentional about the people we speak to and why... This is Radio Now 95.3 FM. Come for the news, stay for informed conversations.